University police received a report that brought suspicion to Cal Poly's campus. The primary season is coming to California in one of the last stops before the convention. And Trump supporters gather for a rally in Fresno. Broadcasting live from Cal Poly in beautiful San Luis Obispo, this is Mustang News. Hello and welcome to Mustang News. I'm Amelia Pereira. And I'm Alexa Burrington. Mustang News starts now. Cal Poly is safe despite rumors that there was a man with a gun in the library. UPD received a report of a suspicious person in the library this past Wednesday morning. The area was cleared within 15 minutes of police searching the library. They later identified the suspect and discovered he was not dangerous. Cal Poly did not call for a state of emergency. There are only eight primaries left before the Democratic Convention. Ayrton Osley has the latest on California's primary on Tuesday. The Democratic primary is set for Tuesday, June 7th. Of the states to have a primary for the Democrats, California has the most delegates at stake with 475. Other states with primaries include Montana, New Jersey, New Mexico, North Dakota, and South Dakota. Currently, Hillary Clinton leads Bernie Sanders in the delegate count. She has 2,313 delegates, 767 more than Sanders. With a victory in California, Clinton would have more than the 2,383 delegates needed to win the overall primary. The race is tied for California so far, with Clinton having a 2% lead over Sanders. In response, Sanders has been campaigning hard in California and multiple locations statewide. And we win in North Dakota, and we win in Montana, and then we win in New Mexico, and we win in New Jersey, we win in Puerto Rico, we win in Washington, D.C. We are going to be going into the Democratic National Convention at the end of July. With stops as local as Santa Maria, Sanders is looking to win the state and put his delegate count over 2,000. Clinton needs 70 delegates to win the overall primary. So even if Sanders wins California, she could clinch the domination with a combination of victories in other states on Tuesday. I need your help next Tuesday. New Jersey, you have the chance to decide the nominee of the Democratic Party next Tuesday. In San Luis Obispo, the primary polling place is at the County Government Center at 1055 Monterey Street, across from the courthouse and next to the Fremont Theater. After Tuesday's primaries, only the D.C. primaries left until the convention in July. Ayrton Osley, Mustang News. Polls open up Tuesday at 7 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. Bernie Sanders is still in California after paying a visit to Santa Maria last weekend. I went to the rally to see why Cal Poly students are so excited about this Democratic candidate. Your land, this land is my land, from California through the New York Island. I'm here inside Santa Maria High School where, as you can see behind me, hundreds of people are anxiously waiting for Senator Bernie Sanders to come out and speak. About 7,500 people came out to see Sanders talk about what he proposes to bring to the United States if he becomes president. Many Cal Poly students stood among the crowd and said how they felt to be at the rally and a part of Sanders' legacy. I'm going to feel very emotional, like I'm going to be very loud. I'm probably going to scream like a girl. <laughs> Those students also said which issues they hoped Sanders would address in his speech. The climate change, the environment, clean energy, and climate change, student debt, make college free. Once Sanders arrived, those students heard what they were hoping for. Together, we are going to take on the fossil fuel industry. <laughs> and tell them that their short-term profits are not more important than the future of our planet. <laughs> Thank you. I believe it is time to impose a tax on Wall Street speculation, which will bring in more than enough money to make public colleges and universities tuition free and lower student debt. Senator Sanders gave his speech from this podium that is right behind me, and now that he has wrapped it up, Cal Poly students are giving their reactions. It was everything I could have possibly hoped for and dreamed. Sanders wraps up his California rallies in Santa Cruz before the June 7th primary. Amelia Pereira, Mustang News. Sanders added a couple more rally dates to his schedule this week and will appear in Northern California at the end of the week. On the other side of the political spectrum, Republican nominee Donald Trump is also trying to get the California vote. He is currently in Sacramento. Last week in Fresno, he made California's water problems the focal point of his rally. 
With a backdrop of supporters holding Farmers for Trump sign, Trump made headlines by talking about opening up the water systems in California. Trump claimed that there is no drought and California turns the water out into the ocean. Trump promised that he would save California's water problem by collecting the water that he says is getting pushed out to sea. Protests continued in Fresno as supporters and critics clashed outside Selland Arena in downtown Fresno, which required an increased police presence. Memorial Day weekend may be over, but for a group of Pismo residents, it's more than a weekend. It's a part of life. Veterans like Colonel David Kramer spoke at the event, thanking those who gave their lives. There was a flag raising as well as shots fired off toward the ocean in honor of servicemen and women. United States serviceman Robert Tolan said he hoped that the community understood the message at the service. When the bullets are flying, it's not even about politics or about war. It's about protecting the guy next to you. But, I mean, we're not out there to go just kill people, you know? We're not, that's not what we're, we're trained to if, it, if we get in that situation. But in reality, we're just trying to protect our brothers. Coming up on Mustang News, downtown San Luis Obispo is making changes for expansion. And Cal Poly becomes more sustainable by decorating the campus with new plants. This is why you took a second job. While you taught yourself how to fix the plumbing. While you'll do whatever it takes to keep your home. And that is why we want to help. We are making home affordable, a free government resource that can make paying the mortgage easier. Call 888-995-HOPE today. Hey, Hard, what's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning? Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you get stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll, I'll do better. Please. Don't quit on me. Okay, but remember, it's not what you say, it's what you do. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. You constantly ignore me. You barely eat anything healthy. You're half as active as you used to be. The pressure is just too much. I quit. Okay, I get it. I'll do better. Just please, don't leave. Okay, but remember, if I go, you go. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Hi, may I please have an application? Thank you. Skip the drama. Get your diploma. Okay. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. Downtown Slo is making room for more shopping as well as adding another street to a weekly tradition. Mustang News reporter Aiden Matthews has the story. Roads and sidewalks of San Luis Obispo's downtown have been blocked off for weeks. This is to make room for the new stores that will come as a result of what's called the Chinatown Project. The Chinatown Project will feature stores like William Sonoma, H&M, and an apartment building that plans to offer Cal Poly student housing. The Chinatown Project won't be the only addition for downtown. The Thursday night farmer's market is adding Charo Street alongside Mission Plaza. Chantal Peterson is the slow farmer's market manager. She says the addition of Charo Street will be used for the fresh harvest section of the market. What kind of groups can we have that are not necessarily similar to what we have, you know, with the strawberries or, you know, the broccoli, something very different. Peterson says the different foods will include local fish, rabbit, poultry, and eggs. Um, and there's so many other new produce items out there, such as meat, seafood, nuts, things that aren't already at the market. So we wanted to find more ways to incorporate that, really make it kind of your one-stop shop um, for San Luis Obispo. Both the Chinatown Project and the Farmer's Market expansion have been waiting to happen for a long time. The Chinatown Project has begun construction, but the new stores won't be open until later this year. However, the Farmer's Market will feature its Churro Street expansion tonight, June 2nd at 6 p.m. Aiden Matthews, Mustang News. 
The expansion on Choro Street is now a permanent feature of the farmer's market, and although the Chinatown project is still under construction, the plan is for many of the stores to be open by the fall. The drought in California is still a major issue, so Cal Poly is working to do their part in saving water. The facilities department has recently installed drought-tolerant plants in certain areas of campus as part of the 2015 Drought Action Plan. The Drought Action Plan is part of the Drought Response Plan to reduce water use by 25 percent across campus. Plants like barrel cacti, octopus agave, and trailing ice plant are just some of the plants being used. Because the plants are drought tolerant, they won't need irrigation after the establishment period, which is done by drip irrigation. The establishment period will continue from now until next rain season, expected in fall of 2016. Landscape manager Ron Hostick said the goal of the program is to create an attractive landscape without irrigation. Newly instated plants can be found behind Alex G. Spano Stadium along California Boulevard. For five years, Cal Poly's Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship has helped students turn ideas into businesses. The center operates on an on-campus hatchery or an innovative place to develop business ideas in addition to their partnership with the Slow Hot House and Incubator, now in its sixth year. The center has just accepted its roster to be put through its summer program, 25 teams of students initially pitched ideas. It was narrowed down to a top 12 and out of them, only eight were chosen. Lori Jordan, the head of student innovations on campus, explains what the center is looking for in candidates for the program. We look at three main pillars. So we look at the team itself. Is this the team that's going to you know, make this happen? Uh, we look at the idea. Is the idea something that's innovative, new, taking a new spin on something? And then we look at the market fits. The program begins focusing on seeing what the potential customers of each product may want and ends with actually creating a viable product. The finished accelerator products are displayed at a demo day near the very end of our summer break. Lori also said that about 50% of companies that have been through the program are still running today. The Society of Civil Engineers Steel Bridge Competition Team is making Cal Poly history. Laura Hoover has the story. Yeah. The team took second place for the second consecutive year at the American Society of Civil Engineers national competition last week. Teams from across the country competed to create the most efficient and most effective steel bridge possible. Each bridge is judged on how much it weighs, how well it handles weight, and how long it takes to construct. Civil Engineering junior John Stern is working with the team this year so that he can captain the project his senior year as a construction lead. There's a bunch of awards for each, um, like lightness, stiffness, um, and then construction speed, which is what we're practicing right now. These factors are calculated into a cost, and the cheapest bridge wins. The project team is also a senior project for five of the captains. Civil engineering senior Tyler Van Enderstein is the senior project design lead. He says each member has put in more than 1,000 hours preparing for the competition. The hardest thing is going from design to fabrication, because you have this perfect 3D model, everything works perfectly, and then you get out there, you cut the metal, you start welding it, and nothing lines up. Nothing works the first time ever. The team creates a code which is fed to a CNC machine. Civil engineering senior Drew Glover is the fabrication captain who is in charge of the CNC machinery. And obviously we have a 20-foot span bridge, you can't make it out of one piece. So it has to have connections in the middle in order to put all the pieces together. And that's where we use these to make all those little tiny intricate connections. While imagining, designing, and building a steel bridge from scratch is no easy task, these engineering students say it is all worth the hard work in the end. Good. Wait. Done. Done. Laura Hoover, Mustang News. The Steel Bridge team's second place bridge costs just over $3.5 million. It weighed 132 pounds and took 7 minutes and 33 seconds to build. Graduation is just around the corner and graduating seniors had a chance to showcase the projects that they have been working on all year. Jillian Smith has more on one of the projects featured at this year's Project X. Outdoor grilling might be a much easier task thanks to two Cal Poly students. Mechanical engineering seniors Sam Mello and Monty Dodge have built an apparatus that measures the temperature inside a grill in hopes to create an even dispersal of heat. They just wanted a, their grills to be really good at having an even temperature wherever you put things. So if you set, there's five burners, if you set them all on high or all on low, it should be the same temperature everywhere on the grill. It shouldn't have flare-ups. It shouldn't have cold spots where it's not really cooking. So we're basically mapping out where those hot spots and cold spots are and trying to make it all the same. 
Mechanical engineering senior projects are typically made up of a group of four or five students, but that's not the case for Sam and Monty. But typically in the design build process, you know, brainstorming with only two people is a little bit challenging. Um, you know, uh, coordinating becomes a little bit easier, but the brainstorming sessions are, are more difficult. The end goal for this project is to hopefully create a grill that cooks food evenly across and makes burnt hot dogs and cold burgers a thing of the past. Jillian Smith, Mustang News. The Project Expo took place last Friday and included many other interactive projects that enabled spectators to have a hands-on experience. And coming up on Mustang News, Dylan Ring with the weather. I make learning a privilege, not a chore, and frustration a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy and giving up impossible. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought and unconventional methods common. I'm a teacher. I make more. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Hey, did you know 2.4 million loving cats and dogs in shelters and rescues need our help to find a home? Let's go to the shelterpetproject.org and meet a few who are in a shelter near you. Harlo, oh, she's one great listener who loves to hear all your stories. My kind of cat. Cerulo is a sweet, goofy boy who's eager to please. Sounds just like another dog I know. So go to the shelterpetproject.org, search your local shelters and rescues, and go for a cuddle with your next best friend. Adopt. Dylan Ring. Uh, we're looking at today, we're having uh, mid-80s type in temperatures. It's getting pretty hot. Uh, but tomorrow it's going to be even hotter when we get to 92. Going to bring it back down at night to 61. And then for the rest of the week, we're going to be looking at uh, more of the, today's temperatures where it's a mid-80s type deal and then lower as night comes on. And now on to humidity. Uh, it's pretty humid today on Thursday, 43%. Uh, Whereas on Friday, it's going to be a lot hotter, but it's not going to be as humid at 29%. Uh, and then from there on, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, it's just going to rise up in humidity, where we peak at 59% uh, humidity on Monday. And then uh, moving on, we have some advice for the weekend. Uh, so for this week, this weather is going to be really hot. It's going to be 94 tomorrow, so uh, get ready. Uh, make sure that you're drinking some water, staying hydrated, uh, feeling good. and then. You know, just take it easy in the hot hours of the day, 11 to 4. I'm Dylan Ring. Back to you guys, Amelia and Alexa. And coming up after the break, three Cal Poly Club sports made it to their national championship tournaments this weekend. How they did is coming up. They said a bottle was just a bottle. That no one would ever notice me. But I knew I could be more. That one day, I would make people smile. Give me back! They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm, just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. 
Never give up till they buckle up. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's not something you buy. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you, freely. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. I'm Jordan Dunn here with your Mustang News Sports Update. The men's soccer team's 2016-2017 schedule has been released. David Klein has more on how the season looks for the Mustangs. What's going on guys? I'm David Klein and today we'll be looking at the 2016-2017 Cal Poly men's soccer schedule. Let's get right off into it in the month of August. In the preseason, Stanford comes to town. Now Stanford's a team that won the national championship last season, so it'll be very interesting to see how Coach Sampson and the lads fare off against a national championship contender in the Stanford Cardinal. Then, nine days later, the team will travel to the East Coast to take on North Carolina and Wake Forest. Now North Carolina last year won the ACC Coastal Division with a 15-2-3 record, while Wake Forest won the ACC Atlantic Division with a 17-3-2 record. So already off the bat in the regular season, two very big ACC powerhouses for Mustangs to face on the East Coast. Then we move on to the month of September. A couple of Pac-12 opponents in San Diego State and UCLA. Now UCLA is a team that Cal Poly is very familiar with. Last year they lost 4-1 to one to the Bruins in the regular season and then lost again 2-0 to the Bruins in the first round of the NCAA men's tournament. So it'll be a revenge match for the Mustangs to try and get some payback against the Bruins from UCLA. Now we go into the month of October as Big West play begins. Two big games that you want to keep your eye on is on the 15th and the 22nd, UC Santa Barbara. Of course, it's a blue-green rivalry, the biggest soccer rivalry in all of college soccer. Cal Poly will want to get some big points right there along with some other points throughout the regular season. And then, of course, in November, you have postseason uh, play begin for the Big West. And then in the middle of the month, if the Mustangs do make it, the NCAA tournament. So, guys, that's the soccer schedule for the 2016 season for the Mustangs. That's all I got for you. Back to you guys. If you'd like more information about the soccer team, you can check out their page at gopoly.com. Cal Poly's club sports teams proved their skills after reaching national championships this past weekend. Men's lacrosse, rugby, and ultimate frisbee all earned their spot at their national championship tournaments. Men's lacrosse played its way to the final championship game, taking an unfortunate loss to the always dominant, dominant Chapman University. The Cal Poly Rugby Sevens won their first two games on Saturday, but was eliminated from the tournament after going 1-2 and two in the knockout round. The men's ultimate frisbee team was the only team from its conference to advance to the national championship tournament. The team finished the tournament as 17th seed overall. All three teams have high hopes of going even farther in next year's tournaments. That's it for this week's sports updates. Amelia, Alexa, back to you. Thank you, Jordan. Coming up on Mustang News, a cow hauling dining staple is closing its doors. Oh, yeah, of course. All right, we got your personal references, your resume, high school diploma or equivalent. <laughs> Skip the drama. Get your diploma. Yes, it's right there. Great. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. plan today. That's the one. I will not be news today. I will not make another push to be the first man in space with frosted tips and a puka shell necklace. And I will not go viral when my terror is caught on camera when I finally realize that in the vacuum of space, 
No one can hear you sing. I'm Lance Bass, and I will not be trending today because there is a much bigger story that needs to be heard. Cal Poly Staple will soon be closing its doors. Peter Gonzalez asked students how they felt about the upcoming end of an era. I'm here outside Vista Grande, or VG's, as it's known to many residents of Cal Poly, and I asked Cal Poly students how they felt about the fact that VG's will soon be retiring in lieu of a new building. So did you used to eat at VG's as a freshman? Oh yeah, every day. This is my uh, stomping ground, you could say. Uh, the most important thing about VG's is that it's close to all of the dorms. I specifically live in Tanaya, which is right next to VG's, so it's just, uh, it's really nice to be able to walk to VG's in like two minutes, and so uh, you can eat in the middle of the night. It's open like till I think 2 a.m. some nights. So. I'm not sure how uh, allowed this was, but we got our food from VG's and climbed on top of the roof and just sat there, like had our last moments up there, enjoyed, you know, looking out on the whole Poly Canyon and everything and just having a great time. I, I have mixed feelings. Like, I think a lot of people are sad because of the nostalgic aspect. Like, VG's just has kind of always been there. It's like a staple of Cal Poly. Yeah, I think making it bigger and better sounds good um, as long as they do it quickly and it's not like closed for too long. <laughs> Every Friday night you'd come by you know you'd come back from downtown or something like that and everyone would just you know pile into VG's get either a breakfast burrito or you know uh, the the famous waffles we have here and just pig out it was it was amazing. I'm excited for new students because as time goes on the facilities inevitably get older and it's nice to have like newer, more renovated facilities just to enjoy. Vista Grande will be having its retirement party this Friday and students are welcome to attend. Peter Gonzalez, Mustang News. Well, next week we'll be having our best of show where we will feature some of the best coverage from throughout the quarter. And today we have a preview with a look at one of the innovative stories we put together. Mustang News reporter Peter Gonzalez has an explanation on the Electoral College. During election season, you'll often hear the term electoral college said a lot. But what exactly is the electoral college? The process dates back to our founding fathers and the Constitution. The total number of electors is 538, which is equal to the number of representatives in Congress. Number 538 is equal to the total number of representatives in Congress. Of those numbers, 400 are representatives, 100 are senators, and three are electors for the District of Columbia. Even if a candidate receives 50% or more of the popular vote, that does not guarantee them the White House. In order to secure the White House, both the Democrats and the Republicans are fighting to get 270 votes, or more than half of the 538 votes possible in the Electoral College. Both parties tend to focus on states like California, Florida, and Texas because of the big number of electoral votes that each state has. Some states are historically Republican or Democrat. However, there are some states that are known as swing states, like Ohio. It's in states like those that you will see candidates campaign more aggressively. We'll have to stay tuned till November to see which candidate is the first to reach 270. And our best of show and the California primary is set for next Tuesday. And that's all the time we have for you today. I'm Alexa Brewington. And I'm Amelia Pereira. Thank you for joining us this time on Mustang News. For more continuous coverage, check out mustangnews.net. And now here's the Mustang News broadcast crew doing The Running Man. I've got you on my mind, your secret admirer. I've been watching.